order. I'd like to begin with regular business, a review of the minutes of the May 23rd, 2022 commission meeting. Any comments or questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to a review of the memorandum of warrants for the period of May 14, 2022 through June 2nd, 2022. Mr. Byer. Mr. Chairman, commissioners, for that time period, the memorandum of warrants was $3,504,543.75. Thank you. Any comments or questions? All right, hearing none, we will proceed with old business. Consider one appointment to the Central Elmore Water and Sewer Authority Board. Appointment is due June 27th, 2022. The candidate listed is Mr. Conrad White. As you'll remember, we had a member of the board resign last month, and we have started our 30-day process at our previous meeting, and this candidate listed, Conrad White, has fulfilled the requirement to uh, submit a document showing his interest and his experience that may uh, contribute to uh, his willingness and ability to serve on this board. Are there any additional names to be considered? All right, hearing none, this will remain open and at our next meeting we will consider uh, the names that we have for that appointment. We'll proceed now with new business. Um, we'd like to invite uh, Ms. Michelle Wood from DHR. Uh, to come to the podium. Uh, we have the opportunity today to um, recognize and uh, participate in the World Elder Abuse Awareness Day. Ms. Wood. Thank you. Thank you for, uh, I'd like to say thank you to the commission for allowing us to recognize World Elder Abuse Aware Awareness Day. Preventing and addressing elder abuse within the community is a shared responsibility that requires all of our parts as a members of society and preventing and reducing elder abuse starts with having knowledge of what that is. So by understanding the nature and the scope of elder abuse, older adults and their family members can take proactive steps to prevent situations where elder abuse can occur. Research indicates that more than one in 10 elders may experience some type of abuse, but only one in 23 are actually reported. So that means very few elderly and disabled adults who have been abused get the help that they need. Elder abuse can happen to anyone. It can be your, your neighbor, your loved one, or even yourself. Elder abuse refers to the intentional or neglectful act by a caregiver or a trusted individual that results in harm of a vulnerable adult. Physical abuse, neglect, emotional abuse, and financial abuse and exploitation are all forms of elder abuse. DHR is tasked with the responsibility of investigating reports of elder abuse. In 2021, Elmore County DHR investigated 94 reports of possible abuse and neglect of adults. This was the 69% increase in reports from the previous year. If you suspect your older or disabled friends, neighbors, or relatives are being mistreated, you can call the local DHR and report your concerns. Regardless of age or ability, each individual deserves to be safe from harm from those who they come in contact with on a regular basis. And now we'll read the 2022 World Elder Abuse Awareness Proclamation. Whereas older adults deserve to be treated with respect and dignity to enable them to serve as leaders, mentors, volunteers, and vital participating members of our community. And whereas in 2006, the International Network for the Prevention of Elder Abuse in support of the United Nations International Plan of Action proclaimed a day to recognize the significance of elder abuse as a public health and human rights issue. And whereas, 2022 marks the 16th annual World Elder Abuse Awareness Day. Its recognition will promote a better understanding of abuse and neglect of older adults. And whereas, Elmore County DHR and the Elmore County Commission recognize the importance of taking action to raise awareness, prevent, and address elder abuse. And whereas ageism, 
and social isolation are major causes of elder abuse in the United States. And whereas recognizing it is up to all of us to ensure that proper social structures exist so people can retain community and societal connections, reducing the likelihood of abuse. And whereas preventing abuse of older adults through maintained and improving social support like senior centers, human services, and transportation will allow everyone to continue to live as independently as possible and contribute to the life and vibrancy of our communities. And whereas, where there is justice, there can be no abuse. Therefore, Elmore County DHR and the Elmore County Commission urges all people to restore justice by honoring older adults. Join us in our engaging and empowering movement to put an end to abuse. Now, therefore, we, the Elmore County Commission, do hereby proclaim June 15, 2022, as World Elder Abuse Awareness Day in Elmore County and encourage all of our communities to recognize and celebrate older adults and their ongoing contributions to the success and vitality of our county. Sign this the 13th day of June, 2022. And as it stated, Wednesday, June the 15th is actually World Elder Abuse Awareness Day, and the color is purple. So if you're out and about on Wednesday, we encourage you to wear purple. All right. Thank you so much. We certainly appreciate um, you bringing this to our attention and providing us with the details that you did with regards to the issues that we face here locally. I think that always puts things into perspective for all of us. We hear and see things on the national news or, or international news for that matter, and we don't really know how it uh, impacts our local communities. So hearing specific details with regards to the number of calls and number of uh, issues that we have here in the county, I think helps us all understand um, and, and recognize that we need to be on the lookout for this. I know that I am in my profession as a financial advisor, I see, um, a lot of um, dangerous situations where people could certainly be taken advantage of and try to make sure that that does not happen. Any comments or questions from commissioners? And following that, we'll have you and your team come up and we'll take a picture. Michelle, I appreciate what you and your staff do to uh, bring awareness to this, just like you're doing tonight, along with, uh, you know, helping to protect some of our most uh, helpless people in our society, that and children. and. And, and you know, sometimes if you did bring it to our attention, uh, if we, we read about it in the uh, in the media outlets, uh, but some people may not be as aware of it as we are. But I appreciate you bringing this to our attention every year, and appreciate what you and your staff do to help prevent it. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you so much. You know you have to put extra hours in. Your employees do at times too, and. People forget about that, that uh, you get a call out, you have to go, and it uh, takes away from your family also, but uh, we appreciate your time and effort and all your employees that work hard with you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll have you all come up. We'll take a picture. All right, we'll proceed with our next item of business. Consider one appointment to the Montgomery Area Mental Health Authority, Inc., DBA, Caristar Health Board. Appointment due July 11, 2022. We have one candidate listed who has completed the necessary documentation, and that is uh, Ms. Ginger Henry. Uh, as you'll recall, the Montgomery Area Mental Health Authority did go through a name change uh, in recent months to Caristar Health Board which encompasses a large region of central Alabama. And any additional names to be listed for consideration for the Health Care Authority Board? 
All right, hearing none, we'll, consider to, we'll continue to consider names for that uh, in our upcoming meetings. Next item, discuss annual report on errors, insolvents, and litigations on taxes for 2021. Mr. Byer. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, this is an annual report that the Revenue Commissioner uh, presents to you for adoption, um, just summarizing the 2021 tax year. All right, thank you. Any comments or questions there? All right, our next item is consider approval of revised ARP allocation plan and bond allocation plan. Um, I'll say a couple things and then have Mr. Byer and any commissioners add any comments to this. Uh, I think a lot of um, discussion and uh, consideration of many things that we've observed over the last several years uh, in the county in light of the pandemic and other just in general needs that we have in the county uh, relating to all aspects of life in the county, both uh, quality of life, safety, um, public health. Um, we have um, first responders and, and issues and challenges they face, education. All of those areas are covered in uh, this plan to not only uh, effectively utilize the ARP funding that came uh, from the federal government through the state and subsequently to Elmore County. Uh, as you'll recall, uh, the lion's share of the ARP uh, allocation is for our employees and for uh, the adopted plan that we have to compensate employees over the next several years in an elevated fashion on a quarterly basis with the anticipation that we'll budget properly so that those pay increases can become permanent in 2025 and in years to follow when this funding is no longer um, available. Um, I think that is proving to be a, a positive thing in light of the economy and inflation and the other challenges that households are facing. Um, pleased that our um, employees in the county are receiving additional funds now and will for the next several years uh, through this decision that we made uh, several months ago. Um, I know that um, as a county commission, um, we've looked at ways in which we can uh, impact the growth in the county. Uh, we consistently talk about growing in the right way. Um, we're experiencing a lot of growth in certain pockets of the county, uh, specifically um, the northern and the western part of the counties are experiencing a lot of growth, Deedsville, Slapout, Titus, Eclectic, and then we have growth in the Redland area. And so as we see that growth, we want to make sure that we're providing the services necessary. And so one of the larger projects that we have considered here is uh, the West Elmore County uh, sewer connection, which will add a lot of uh, access and opportunity for growth uh, in those areas, both residential and commercial. Uh, and then, um, you know, we have items related to uh, public safety with our volunteer fire departments and opportunities to improve the communication systems uh, that are so vital to the success uh, of our public servants. Um, we have opportunities to assist education uh, with uh, access to facilities, uh, both 17 Springs and Hohenberg Field, um, which uh, the Hohenberg Field will be a, a true testament uh, of a partnership with the city of Wetumpka uh, in a part of our community that will thrive from dollars invested in that area. Um, and then, of course, 17 Springs, which we've all seen as it has uh, really starting to gain people's attention. I, I think as people drive by, they're starting to really see the positive impact of that. And I've had conversations with people from other areas who have heard and seen about that project um, and read about that project. So those are just a few of the highlights. But I, I think all in all, um, we have an opportunity uh, presented before us from the American Rescue Plan funds and from uh, the uh, 
foresight that we had several years ago to institute the levelized lodging tax in the county, which provides us with an additional revenue stream uh, from uh, those who are visiting our county, who are staying in our hotels. Um, that is allowing us to take on transformative projects in our county that will uh, benefit Elmore County for decades to come. Any comments or questions uh, from commissioners or Mr. Byer to add? Mr. Chairman, sure. you did a very good job uh, summarizing uh, the approach that y'all took in uh, the first allocation plan early in the year with ARP. Uh, since then, we have um, moved forward with the bond issue, which actually generated a little extra um, revenue amount, and that was one of the reasons for the uh, uh, the uh, the need to adopt a, a revised list. We were able to take some items from the public public safety sector with some communication towers that um, were able to push those forward in an earlier phase instead of breaking them up into two phases. That'll come out of some of the uh, the bond money. You mentioned the economic development project. There's also some projects in here. Uh, Commissioner uh, Mercer will probably speak to this, but uh, aimed at the broadband and, and some grant programs that ADECA is pushing out and a pending uh, constitutional amendment that uh, voters will get a chance to, to vote on in November uh, to authorize counties to actually join into some of those partnerships. Um, we've tweaked it a little bit with some public work um, aspects. So the, I think the important thing to, to know there is there's about uh, a million and a half on the project side, a little bit uh, under uh, a million and a half, 1.25 on the resource side to kind of enhance services on the public works side of things. But that is also being coupled with um, about $18 million worth of projects that uh, from January of this year till um, the end of 2024 are ongoing in the county between your rebuild and some MPO projects. So um, all total, uh, with those transportation projects and what is on your ARP and bond list um, will be uh, uh, approaching $70 million worth of, of projects. You got 50 million in front of you, 50.7 in front of you um, tonight. And uh, as you mentioned, a lot of them are uh, once in a lifetime investments that are being made to have that long-term effect, which was y'all's goal many, many months ago. So um, Mr. Chairman, that's all I have. Thank you. Chairman, I just have one comment specifically about the communication uh, expenses that we have in here. Uh, we, we have a, a, an aging communication system in our county that all of our first responders, our volunteer fire departments, um, our sheriff's department use. And that's uh, there's been a, a, a few times over the last number of years that has become very evident that we needed to do something with that. So I, I think us taking advantage of this money, just like uh, Mr. Byer just mentioned, uh, uh, the priority projects have been those projects that if it had not been for this money, they would have never happened. And I think this is uh, investing dollars in this communication system, specifically uh, uh, some towers across the county um, that uh, our volunteer fire departments can use, our municipalities, our sheriff's department, any qualified agency that wants to uh, be a part of the system will have, act, will have access to. Uh, I think that's a good investment. Um, Unfortunately, all of us at some point in time may need those services, and it's uh, uh, extremely important that they can have uh, proper communications. That's all I have, Chairman. Thank you. All right, I appreciate, uh, again, all the hard work that went into um, advancing some of these projects, and I'm certainly excited, as we all are, uh, to see continued progress, not only with some of these uh, one-time investments, but also with the continuation of the road work um, that is happening throughout the county. Our next item, consider authorizing chairman to execute West Elmore Sewer Group Compact. And I referenced this earlier um, with respect to um, growing properly and providing um, <coughs> capacity for sewer um, and, and for the expansive uh, growth in that area and how we can properly manage that. This compact is not, um, it, it involves several municipalities and 
um, utility groups and will provide us with um, a way for us to invest some of that ARP money in conjunction with them and those entities uh, to further advance the sewer services in that area. Mr. Chairman, this will, uh, this will effectively put the city of Millbrook, the town of Deetsville, the town of Elmore, Elmore Water and Sewer, and the city of Wetumpka in partnership with, well, better not use that term, in, in a uh, compact with the county commission um, and uh, put us in a position to be able to advance that sewer project. Uh, it'll allow that group to, to um, cooperate with Wetumpka Water and Sewer to uh, accomplish the, uh, the goal of increasing capacity. And, and Chairman, the, uh, the compact is, is uh, created in a fashion so it allows for, for growth in the future. If there are other qualified entities, entities that want to participate, uh, that is something that uh, can surely be considered and uh, can they, the, uh, the group, the original group can make that happen. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I think this uh, commission has always taken opportunities to partnership with other entities to for the betterment of the lives of the citizens. If you drive through Tallahassee as we speak and look up, you can see a, a prime example of that with the refurb complete refurbishing of the downtown city water tower. Uh, the Emerald County partnered with the city of Tallahassee to uh, accomplish that goal. And the Emerald County Commission allocated over 400,000 of the 500 plus thousand for that project. So I think uh, we take advantage of our, those opportunities we have in the past to work with the cities and other entities in the counties, and, and we'll continue to do that in the future. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Byers, question. For the town of Casada, because I noticed that that entity wasn't listed, did we reach out to them in order to see if they wanted to participate in this compact, or what happened with that? They were reached out at the beginning of the, uh, the process, and uh, they did not want to uh, pursue the, the project in the, um, the fashion that the, uh, the group wanted to to make it the most effective way to use the capacity from Wetumpka. They okay. wanted to go a different route, which would not have been cost effective for the partnership. Okay, but I see with the additional participants, if they wanted to join, they could. Yes, ma'am. They could. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, we'll move to the next item. Discuss approval of one-time lump sum payment for retirees per Act 2022-229. Mr. Byer. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. The, uh, the legislature adopted in this past session a, uh, an act that would allow for a one-time lump sum payment for retirees. The county commission has until um, August of this year to adopt a resolution, um, which is in your packet, that would offer that up. Our our cost for our retirees, that one-time cost, would be $37,408. And uh, uh, in essence, it's $2 for every month of credit, uh, service credit that they uh, have in the system. So um, we are making the recommendation that you adopt that uh, resolution and you authorize the chairman to execute that so we can be ready for the, uh, the payment that would be due in October. All right. Thank you. All right, our next item, discuss authorizing chairman to execute development and land use agreement for Hohenberg Field Complex upon review by county attorney. And this was referenced earlier. I think this uh, development and land use agreement is comparable to the agreement that we have in place at 17 Springs. It is. It with is. With respect it, to the, the partnership and the prospective use of the facilities. That is correct. It does that and it sets out the... Uh, uh, the funding parameters um, for us, the city, and the uh, Board of Education. It also, as you said, it, it sets out the use, but it also establishes the uh, um, the credit for the Board of Education to be able to use it for their programs and not mm -hmm. not be in a position where they have to pay on a per game or annual basis. Yeah, and I think that's important to note, and we'll mention that briefly, is we've got some um, very um, – willing municipalities to partner with the local schools with respect to facilities. We're seeing it happen in Millbrook with 17 Springs. We're seeing it happen here in Wetumpka. You've got uh, the, the football stadium and track, and now you've got some uh, advancements made going to be made at Hohenberg Field for uh, soccer and other sports. And as we see this move forward, 
um, the municipalities and, and other entities are making large investments, but we don't want those large investments to uh, result in the schools having to pay to use facilities that are in existence, tennis courts, other facilities that are in existence in our communities. So as we move forward, um, we're making every effort to facilitate the, the agreements between the municipalities and the Board of Education so that that is not an issue. Um, we collectively as a county commission, and I'm sure others, um, as Mr. Byer said, I, we don't want Wetumpka High School to have a tennis match at the new tennis courts, but have to pay the city a fee to use the tennis courts. Um, and in an effort to avoid that, we're facilitating and making sure that we have these agreements on the front end uh, before we get to a point where um, it becomes an issue. And so I'm pleased that we're, um, we have this model at 17 Springs that we're able to use in other communities and hopefully even more communities down the road in our county. Our next item, consider budget amendment to allocate $30,000 to Grandview YMCA for expenditures related to 17 Springs Phase 1. Mr. Byer. Chairman, Commissioners, uh, on the onset of Phase 1, we knew that there were some things that the Y would end up taking on as operating costs that uh, until revenues started to be generated, um, were gonna be things the city and the county would be asked to uh, assist with. Things, things of that nature are like portable restrooms that were out there when the first uh, field opened up. Um, the um, apparatuses that are used at the soccer fields, the benches, those kind of things. Those are things that were acquired by the Y to, to get those uh, facilities up and running. And we actually pulled those out of our bid package um, last summer when we were moving forward and let them go through the process to, to do that. The intent the entire time was to come back after those expenditures had been made and be able to um, uh, offset those costs with the YMCA, with the city and county, um, footing the, uh, the bill equally. So um, tomorrow night, the uh, city of Millbrook has a similar item on their agenda to um, adopt 30,000. I think the actual cost in your uh, Spreadsheet that you have is 56,260, um, but this would allow us the room because there's a couple months of operational cost uh, that we could experience in the fall that we're uh, factoring in there, uh, depending on when the contractor finishes with all the improvements in the tennis and the multi-purpose complex. Thank you. And I think I'll also just add that. Uh, we, the County Commission, contributed a comparable amount to the Wetumpka YMCA uh, for the swimming pool that was recently opened and completed. Um, I was at the ribbon cutting for the swimming pool uh, several weeks ago, and I've heard nothing but rave reviews about the swimming pool and its use uh, in Wetumpka by the YMCA members and a lot of the after-school programs or summer camp programs there. The next item, uh, discuss petition for reimbursement of excess funds from tax sale of real property by Nelson Mullins Riley and Scarborough LLP to HMG Holdings LLC for 29150418000015.001. And I'll go ahead and read the next one, then we'll just get comment from our county attorney. Discuss petition for reimbursement of excess funds from the tax sale of real property by Nelson Mullins Riley and Scarborough LLP to HMG Holdings LLC for 2915-04-17-0003-014.000. Mr. Courtney, is it your professional opinion that both of these petitions have satisfied all legal requirements? Yes, sir, it is. Okay, thank you. Our next item, consider approving resolution to widen, resurface, and traffic stripe on Marion Spillway from Ingram Road East 1.87 miles to Alabama 143. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, uh, this item and the next two um, are all three 
uh, projects that are funded through the MPO. These are uh, COVID relief dollars that were run through the transportation bill and actually allocated to our DOT and then sub allocated in a, uh, a smaller fashion to each of the MPOs. Um, our, our chairman, along with our mayors, um, took the position that the uh, MPO needed to um, equally distribute those funds in the uh, uh, MPO area. So each one of our municipalities and each county uh, received an allocation. I believe the exact dollar amount was $235,000. So what we have done, this is another example of partnering together with our municipalities. We partnered with many of the municipalities in the MPO and we're doing joint projects with each one of them to make our money go further and address projects that are important to their areas. Um, what is not on here and will be coming up later in a, in a later meeting is some projects with the city of Wetumpka that we're doing with them as well. So, um, so the county's amount is kind of spread out between these projects because just about every one of the roads um, has an aspect of county uh, maintenance with the exception of uh, Chapman, that's all the, the uh, city of Millbrook and a small portion in the uh, town of Cusada. But everything else is a county road that these municipalities are putting the money on because it affects their municipalities. So um, these resolutions will allow us to move on. Um, and the intent, I know of the very last item is uh, we've got a small window next summer to have all that done before school starts. The other will all be let sometime around the first of the year with construction going on next year um, during the spring summertime. So. All right, thank you. And I'll go ahead and uh, go through the next two projects, which are included in some of the comments Mr. Byer just made. Consider approving resolution to resurface and traffic stripe on First Avenue from Alabama 143 East 0.28 miles to Baltzer Road and on Baltzer Road from First Avenue North 1.88 miles to Flatwood Road. Consider approving resolution to install multi-use path, resurface, and traffic stripe Chapman Road from East from Main Street, Alabama 143 East 0.8 miles to the Millbrook City Limits and intersection improvements at Chapman Road and Airport Road. So all three of those are MPO projects and for everyone's information, the MPO is a collective organization on which I sit on the board along with many of the mayors in our county and uh, Montgomery County and Autauga County. And we collectively are able to use funds for specific projects. And as Mr. Byer stated, this was um, specifically COVID relief money that was additional funds that we were able to utilize in a quick manner. Uh, next item, consent docket, approve proposed plat for Coventry Plat 4, 10 lots. Approve proposed plat for Burt Hollow, 15 lots. Approve proposed plat for Russell Cabins at the Ridge, plat number four, four lots. Approve family medical leave request for Michael Wingard, corrections officer. Approve declaration of emergency illness for Michael Wingard, corrections officer. Personnel notifications, notification of termination of Gregory Moses, equipment operator two, effective 518, 2022. Notification of resignation of Aubrey Rawls, Equipment Operator 1, effective 524-2022. Notification of hire of Robert Cody Griffin, Equipment Operator 1, replace A. Rawls, effective 66-2022. Notification of hire of Jeffrey Young, Corrections Officer, replace C. Amerson, effective 522-2022. Notification of hire of Whitney Barrett, Part-Time Corrections Officer, effective 526-2022. Notification of resignation of Shelby Schulte, Corrections Officer, effective 6-2-2022. Notification of hire of Josiah Bush, Corrections Officer, replace S. Schulte, effective 6-7-2022. Notification of promotion of Charles Driscoll, Investigator, effective 6-6-2022. Notification of promotion of Philip Wesley Powell, Sergeant, effective 6-6-2022. Notification of promotion of Benjamin Colley, Sergeant, effective 6-6-2022. Notification of promotion of Truman Franklin, Sergeant, effective 6-6-2022. Notification of promotion of Austin Carr, Sergeant, effective 6-6-2022.
Notification of reassignment of Parker Crosby, Sergeant, effective 6 8 2022. Notification of resignation of Cameron Ricks, Lieutenant, effective 6 17 2022. Notification of reclassification of Whitney Barrett, part time to full time corrections officer, replace K. Ricks, effective 6 11 2022. Notification of re resignation of Patrick Riley McCormick, Chief Clerk of Probate, effective 5 14 2022. Notification of rehire of Ted Cotton, Youth Counselor, Crenshaw Park <coughs> Summer Youth Program, effective 5-31-2022. Notification of rehire of Rhonda Penn, Youth Counselor, Crenshaw Park Youth Summer Youth Program, effective 5-31-2022. We'll now proceed with reports to the Commission, Mr. Byer. That's probably the longest personnel notification you've read in a long time, but luckily most of those are hires and promotions, so that was mm -hmm. a, a better reading. Uh, than, than in past months. Um, in front of you, you've got a bound copy of um, our pared down list of rebuild projects. Luke and his staff at Public Works have worked um, diligently to uh, start narrowing down the road. Um, uh, most of the commissioners will remember that we typically give this out. Behind it has got a listing of the road grades and, and the other um, county roads. Uh, I believe we did those in numerical order, and then they're in um, uh, alphabetical order to make it a little easier for you by road grade. Um, the the intent of this, this is the first cut. We'll be taking input from y'all about roads that either aren't on here or roads that are definitely priorities for you so we can get into that range of about $1.2 million on the uh, rebuild side. And then um, uh, we will have... Um, uh, as, as up for approval for you, there's another uh, little over a million dollars for resurfacing projects. So in the notes of the ARP allocation, we have some suggested roads there. Um, old GS-231 being the, the most prevalent because of where it leads to an economic development uh, aspects up on uh, Jordan. Um, but if you'll look at that, our intent would be to try to have this list pared down by the end of the month with each commissioner. Um, and then hopefully be in a position by the first meeting in July to adopt this plan. Um, the rebuild plan has to be adopted and posted on our website by the end of August. That is the uh, statutory deadline under rebuild. Um, but we trying our best to, to always stay ahead of that curve. So any questions or comments after you get a chance to look at that, please let, let me know and we'll work through that um, and, and go from there. A couple other items on the... Uh, transportation side. Um, our roundabout is is fully open to traffic now in a roundabout setting, not stop condition or anything like that. Last week, there was a lot of major work that went on. Um, we try to get out as much information as possible in advance about the delays. Uh, I imagine several of you heard about um, long waits, but the way that the roundabout's configured, they had to get all that work done to be able to put traffic in there um, in the uh, um, in the actual circle part, and you couldn't do that with an asphalt spreader sitting there or a striping truck or anything like that, so they had to pick their times to go through there. I think we had one instance where law enforcement came through, uh, and uh, they were allowed to get around the roundabout and around the traffic control. <coughs> the, uh, the other thing I want to mention is um, our contractor is getting set to go to work with our federal aid exchange funds on Rifle Range Road between Mitchell Creek and Ware Road. This is another project going on in that area. It's a bridge replacement. Um, it'll actually end up being a culvert when everything's said and done, a large box culvert. Um, they're getting everything prepared for that uh, road closure. When that does happen, um, our estimated time right now is about five months that that stretch of road will be um, detoured and closed down. So you can, uh, uh, you know, you can prepare, even though we're pushing information out, you'll prepare to get phone calls about that. I think Commissioner Daughtry had the last detour over on Cherokee Trail, and we hit it about right in terms of the timing. But that didn't stop, you know, phone calls from coming and, and people not uh, seeing our information get pushed out. Um, I know that Commissioner Hines has an update on this, but I will say that the transition from waste management to Arrow has gone probably as smooth as we can expect it to go. Um, there's hiccups that are still happening. Most of that is on waste management's end. Um, with uh, not getting containers picked up. But I, I will say for Arrow's standpoint, they've been very expedient in answering 
calls and concerns and emails and not quite like when we were dealing with the waste management issues, but we're still getting them at all hours and we, our staff is doing our best to get them knocked out as quick as possible. So hopefully y'all are seeing that on your end as well. Um, I will be having a follow-up call with Lewis Hines uh, out of Alabama State this week about redistricting. Um, once we get through next Tuesday, uh, that'll be the, the time for us to um, approach that and get that um, process handled. Uh, Y'all have until the 24 election cycle to have all that done and in place, but believe me, time will go really fast after the uh, the runoff and the general election, so we want to try to get everything in place. I think we have some minor deviations, so I don't expect it to be too uh, dramatic, but we will be going through that process. Uh, tomorrow will, will be our last um, major department um, budget meeting. Commissioner Hines, I believe the chairman will be uh, in a position to sit in on that with our public works. Uh, we still have a few other things to work out. There'll be some things on the facility side. There'll be some on IT that we'll be talking through. But so far, I think if you talk to the other department heads, the budget meetings have gone very well. Uh, that is due into uh, large part with uh, Mike and Courtney being uh, in a position to have everything prepared for them and the department's worked really well to give us back good information. So um, if everything is on tap with the, uh, the meetings tomorrow, then we should be in a position to where that first meeting in August we can uh, target to adopt our budget. That means y'all will have budgets in your hand first part of July and have about a month to go over things with us and make sure that you're satisfied with everything that's in the budget. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that's all I have in the way of report. Do y'all have any questions or comments for me? No. Thank you for that report. We certainly appreciate all this information on the roads and road grades and um, take the opportunity to review that over the next several weeks. Uh, we'll now proceed with reports from the commission. We'll begin uh, with Commissioner Hines. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, as Mr. Byer said, uh, I want to thank uh, Van Forster and uh, James Cloggren from uh, Waste management, uh, they are working hard and diligent to try to handle every little complaint that we're sending to them. Uh, we still have a good many carts out there, but they have picked up uh, 20,129 carts uh, as of uh, this morning. Uh, Van sent me an email and said that's where they're at of uh, picking up carts. There's some stragglers, so please tell your residents uh, when they call you or email you to leave them by the road. And uh, there's an email for them to do. It's uh, wmalabama at wastemanagement.com. Uh, wmalabama at, wasteman at wm.com, okay? Uh, and I'll hand it to you in a little bit as uh, fellow commissioners. But uh, if they'll email them, uh, the management team is out with uh, a pickup a trailer behind it and picking up the uh, few straggler containers that's out there. Uh, also, uh, ERA, as uh, Mr. Byer has said, has done an outstanding job of every little problem we popped them at. They've come back and within 12 to 24, at the most 36 hours, taking care of the problem uh, of all that we've had out there. They have set up 18,805 uh, new customers that they have out there now, uh, and that's all of them that has transferred and the new ones that they're continually signing up also that ERA's uh, going at. They have 11 collective vehicles assigned to Elmore County that's picking up uh, our trash uh, on a daily basis. And they have extra two vehicles just in case if uh, something happens to a driver or to a uh, truck that they can throw it out also and can take care of the any problems they have. All their employee positions are filled. They did have one they just released, but they had a backup driver to put back in that truck. So Seems like they don't put up with a lot of slack. If he doesn't do his job, they just remove them and replace someone they have. They are overstaffed. They have set up a full facility at uh, the uh, old Russell plant on Highway 14, and it's fully staffed now with the manager and uh, with full employees for the work, and all their employees report there daily. Uh, all the landfill commitments are taken care of, and they have all agreements done, and the Wetumpka carts, uh, they have delivered them to the city facility also. Uh, Again, that's, uh, as uh, Mr. Byer said, I think as far as a transaction, when you're talking over 20,000 accounts and containers that was out there, that uh, 
our uh, headaches have, have slowed down a lot. My phone calls and emails have, have come down to just several a day, and I've noticed the same way with uh, some of you out there. But again, if you have a problem, please contact uh, one of us, and uh, uh, Mr. Gentry has been great in taking care of that and handling that. Uh, road work, uh, we're just grateful that uh, Rebuild Alabama, we've had those extra uh, over a million dollars that's helped us get ahead on some roads that we would not have paid, and then with the extra money that we're going to put into this budget also, uh, uh, that we can take care of several more roads is out there, and our road scrapers are out there steadily right now taking care of uh, all our dirt road because uh, uh, we had some great weather that's helped take care of that, and all the potholes, the, our machine is steadily working there, and I want to thank Luke and his staff for uh, just following through and uh, any customer complaint, uh, resident complaint, excuse me, that uh, they have on uh, any potholes and stuff, they've been able to take care of that. Uh, mowing is at a steady pace, so I ask all our residents, please be careful out there because they are mowing and uh, be courteous out there and also to all the trash trucks because some of these drivers are new and uh, they, uh, they're they taking a little longer on their stops and stuff. And uh, they've even gotten out of the truck several times, I've heard residents say, and even picked up trash that was uh, spilled out. So. Great response from ARA, and I want to thank them, and again, thank uh, Ban and James for uh, working with us to change it over. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Daughtry. Uh, just one thing that Mr. Byer alluded to, of those 18 uh, personnel notifications, just like to note that five of those were promotions within the Sheriff's Department. I'd like to congratulate all those individuals and uh, uh, note that we appreciate all of the work, hard work that they do. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Mercer. Thank you, Chairman. I um, we've so, spoken many times uh, at our meetings and and also at public events about the need for broadband access in the county. And one way that we have initially reacted to that is is we we did an analysis of work uh, of what we have in the county. Uh, working with our economic development authority, we did a, uh, a countywide broadband accessibility study to know where our gaps are, uh, who, what citizens in different regions of the county have access and which citizens do not. And, and we've used that as a tool to, uh, to uh, let other providers know that Elmore County is a great place to invest. And we've seen some success uh, throughout the county, whether it be directly or indirectly. Uh, as a result of our efforts, we, uh, we do have more uh, citizens in the county now that have access uh, that did not in the past. Uh, our next... Um, our, our next effort, phase of this effort is going to be as a result of a, uh, a bill that was passed in our last legislative session that was championed by Senator Schofield. Um, he, um, he has facilitated uh, the ability for the citizens of Alabama to uh, vote on a constitution, constitutional amendment uh, on the next time we go to the polling place, which in part, uh, this constitutional amendment will allow counties to partner with uh, providers uh, on uh, grant-funded uh, broadband expansion projects. Uh, we're going to focus on how we best position Elmore County uh, to uh, be a part of these projects uh, so we ultimately can see that uh, we capture as, as many dollars as we possibly can with the ultimate goal of, uh, of as many citizens as reasonably possible having access to a good broadband uh, signal, whether it be uh, wired, wireless, uh, however uh, we, uh, we can best get that signal to our citizens. Chairman, that's all I have. Thank you, Commissioner Jackson. Thank you, Chairman. I'd like to say thank you to the few that came out to our meeting tonight. It's good to see your faces. A few announcements this weekend. Um, there are a few celebrations for Juneteenth going on here in Elmore County. At Gold Star Park, we have the Elmore County Civic League, Improvement League, excuse me. We have Mr. Means that will have a gathering in Crenshaw, and we have Mr. Henderson who will have a Juneteenth celebration at the Ranch Multiplex. So if you're in any of those areas, stop by, celebrate, have a great weekend. Um, our m and Academics Honors Tea, hosted by our Elmore County m and Group, will be held on June 25th. This is a activity where we honor all of our students in Elmore County who turn in applications for their um, great academic achievements. That will be held at the WB Doby Activity Center. Um, we have a District 5 pickup scheduled for July 9th, we'll be picking up trash. We're going to start super early in the morning because it's really, really hot, and I don't want anybody passing out on my watch. Um, so we'll start early at 7. We're going to be targeting Crenshaw Road, Kane Road, Cobbsport Road, Alabama River Parkway, Chapel Road, and Copeland Road, if I get that many um, to come help out and we form teams. 
And finally, the Crenshaw Park Youth Program kicked off on May 31st. Youth can still participate if you know anyone who is looking for a summer activity and want to get your children out of the house. We have that going on. Um, as for a health update, the heat index is on the rise every day. I think today it raised up to 108. So if you work outside, please stay safe and hydrated. If you get too hot, go inside. Your health means absolutely everything. Thank you, uh, Chairman. That's all. All right, thank you. I appreciate my fellow commissioners and their comments. I'll just add one brief comment, and that is just a reminder to everyone to participate in the runoff elections, which will be held eight days from now on June the 21st. Um, people will have the opportunity to vote at your the same precinct you voted at um, for the primary election. There are um, a few races, uh, specifically statewide, the U.S. Senator race, there's a couple of Public Service Commission runoffs, Secretary of State runoff. Uh, we don't have uh, many or any local runoffs uh, for local positions, um, which is um, a little bit, uh, or historically, that impacts turnout a lot. And if there aren't any local races, uh, people are generally less likely to take time out of their day to go vote in a runoff election. But it is very important that we participate in this process, so I hope that everyone will make plans uh, to participate and exercise their right to vote on Tuesday, June the 21st. I'll now turn the time over to Ms. Brittany for important calendar dates. On Monday, June 20th, the administrative complex will be closed in observance of Juneteenth. On Monday, June 27th, we'll have our next commission work session at 5 p.m. with the business meeting immediately following. Monday, July 4th, the Administrative Complex will be closed in observance of Independence Day. And Monday, July 11th, Commission Work Session at 5 p.m. with the business meeting immediately following. All right. Thank you. We'll reconvene shortly. Good evening. I'd like to welcome you to the Elmore County Commission business meeting dated Monday, June 13. We'll call this meeting to order. I'd like to invite Commissioner Daughtry to offer an invocation, following which I will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to gather to, to serve our fellow, fellow citizens. Father, we pray that decisions we make will be uh, considered with your wisdom and your guidance in mind, Father. And may we always remember that we are servants of the people and that we're entrusted to do a job. For all the men blessings of life, we'll always be grateful. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Join us. Pledge of allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, Ms. Brittany, would you call roll? Commissioner Hines? Here. Commissioner Daltrey? Here. Chairman Stubbs? Here. Commissioner Mercer? Here. Commissioner Jackson? Here. All right, we'll begin with our regular business. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the May 23, 2022 commission meeting? Motion, motion to approve. approve. Second. Ms. Brittany? Commissioner Hines? Yes. Commissioner Daltrey? Yes. Chairman Stubbs? Yes. Commissioner Mercer? Yes. Commissioner Jackson? Yes. Is there a motion to approve the memorandum of warrants for the period of May 14, 2022 through June 2, 2022? Motion approved. Second. Ms. Brittany? Commissioner Hines? Yes. Commissioner Daltrey? Yes. Chairman Stubbs? Yes. Commissioner Mercer? Yes. Commissioner Jackson? Yes. We'll proceed now with new business. Is there a motion to approve World Elder Abuse Awareness Day proclamation? Motion to approve. Second. Ms. Brittany? Commissioner Hines? Yes. Commissioner Daltrey? Yes. Chairman Stubbs? Yes. Commissioner Mercer? Yes. Commissioner Jackson? Yes. Is there a motion to approve annual report on errors, insolvents, and litigations on taxes for 2021? Motion approved. Second. Ms. Brittany? Commissioner Hines? Yes. Commissioner Daltrey? Yes. Chairman Stubbs? Yes. Commissioner Mercer? Yes. Commissioner Jackson? Yes. Is there a motion to approve revised ARP allocation plan and bond allocation plan? Motion to approve. Second. Second. Ms. Brittany? Commissioner Hines? Yes. Commissioner Daltrey? Yes. Chairman Stubbs? Yes. Commissioner Mercer? Yes. Commissioner Jackson? Yes. 
Is there a motion to approve authorizing chairman to execute West Elmore Sewer Group Compact? Motion to approve. Second. Ms. Brittany? Commissioner Hines? Yes. Commissioner Daltrey? Yes. Chairman Stubb? Yes. Commissioner Mercer? Yes. Commissioner Jackson? Yes. Is there a motion to approve one-time lump sum payment for retirees per Act 2022-229? Motion to approve. Second. Ms. Brittany? Commissioner Hines? Yes. Commissioner Daltrey? Yes. Chairman Stubb? Yes. Commissioner Mercer? Yes. Commissioner Jackson? Yes. Is there a motion to approve authorizing chairman to execute development and land use agreement for Hohenberg Field Complex upon review by county attorney? Motion to approve. Second. Ms. Brittany? Commissioner Hines? Yes. Commissioner Daltrey? Yes. Chairman Stubbs? Yes. Commissioner Mercer? Yes. Commissioner Jackson? Yes. Is there a motion to approve budget amendment to allocate $30,000 to Grandview YMCA for expenditures related to 17 Springs Phase 1? Motion to approve. Second. Ms. Brittany? Commissioner Hines? Yes. Commissioner Daltrey? Yes. Chairman Stubbs? Yes. Commissioner Mercer? Yes. Commissioner Jackson? Yes. Is there a motion to approve petition for reimbursement of excess funds from the tax sale of real property by Nelson, Mullins, Riley, and Scarborough LLP to HGM Holdings LLC for 29-15-04-18-0001-015.001? Motion approved. Second. Ms. Brittany? Commissioner Hines? Yes. Commissioner Daltrey? Yes. Chairman Stubbs? Yes. Commissioner Mercer? Yes. Commissioner Jackson? Yes. Is there a motion to approve petition of reimbursement of excess funds from the tax sale of real property by Nelson, Mullins, Riley, and Scarborough LLP to HGM Holdings LLC for 29-15-04-17-0003-014.000? Motion to approve. Second. Ms. Brittany? Commissioner Hines? Yes. Commissioner Daltrey? Yes. Chairman Stubbs? Yes. Commissioner Mercer? Yes. Commissioner Jackson? Yes. Is there a motion to approve resolution to widen, resurface, and traffic stripe on Marion Spillway from Ingram Road East 1.87 miles to Alabama 143? Motion approved. Second. Ms. Brittany? Commissioner Hines? Yes. Commissioner Daltrey? Yes. Chairman Stubbs? Yes. Commissioner Mercer? Yes. Commissioner Jackson? Yes. Is there a motion to approve resolution to resurface and traffic stripe on First Avenue from Alabama 143 East 0.28 miles to Baltzer Road and on Baltzer Road from First Avenue North 1.88 miles to Flatwood Road? Motion approved. And second. Ms. Brittany. Commissioner Hines? Yes. Commissioner Daltrey? Yes. Chairman Stubbs? Yes. Commissioner Mercer? Yes. Commissioner Jackson? Yes. Is there a motion to approve resolution to install multi-use path, resurface, and traffic stripe Chapman Road from Main Street, Alabama 143, east 0.8 miles to the Millbrook city limits and intersection improvements at Chapman Road and Airport Road? Motion to approve. Second. Ms. Brittany? Commissioner Hines? Yes. Commissioner Daltrey? Yes. Chairman Stubbs? Yes. Commissioner Mercer? Yes. Commissioner Jackson? Yes. All right, we'll proceed now with the consent docket. Is there a motion to approve the consent docket as presented in the work session? Motion to approve. Second. Ms. Brittany? Commissioner Hines? Yes. Commissioner Daltrey? Yes. Chairman Stubbs? Yes. Commissioner Mercer? Yes. Commissioner Jackson? Yes. We will forego the personnel notifications. Are there any additional reports to the commission? No, sir. All right. Hearing none, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Ms. Brittany? Commissioner Hines? Yes. Commissioner Daltrey? Yes. Chairman Stubbs? Yes. Commissioner Mercer? Yes. Commissioner Jackson? Yes. We are adjourned.